China's first mission to Mars launched successfully today, bringing the Red Planet one step closer. What role does Tianwen One play in China's wider space exploration program? And is it motivated by science, economics, or political gain? And coming up later, bilateral relations between U.S. and China hit a new low as China's oldest consulate in the United States is ordered to close over accusations of espionage. Is the Trump administration's shock move meant to win votes or distract from pandemic failings? Welcome to The Point. Coming to you from Beijing, I'm Wang Guan, sitting in for Liu Xin. Now China's space program enters a new era with the launch of the Tianwen-1 rocket on Wednesday, carrying a Mars lander and rover and, sta and uh, stated to land on the Red Planet in April 2021. The mission is China's first to rely entirely on Chinese rockets and technology. If successful, China will become the second nation ever to place a rover on Mars. But what is the goal? And with the recently launched UAE orbiter and a soon-to-launch U.S. rover also headed to the Mars, are we on the verge of a new era of cooperation or a new space race? Joining us to answer those questions are Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, Chair of the Science Cooperation Operations Working Group for NASA's Mars rover mission, and Professor Yang Yuguang of the China Aerospace Science and Industry Group. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to both of you. Um, uh, Professor Yang, why don't I start with you? According to a paper publish, published in the journal Nature Astronomy, Tianwen-1's rover may land on northeastern Mars. Uh, explain to our viewers the significance of this location. Well, uh, honestly speaking, the, f uh, the final location of the landing site has not been announced, so it depends. We still wait for the uh, formal announcement of, the, uh, of this location uh, from the China National Space Administration. Second, from this paper, we can read that the uh, Utopia planet here is a very flat place. So we can understand that this is a very flat place, and it is from the, go from the uh, aspect of engineering, it is easy to be landing on this place. So because this is our first launch attempt, and the seven minutes of terror will be the greatest challenge for us. So this is a very good place for the landing to test the technologies, mastering the entry, descent, and uh, landing technologies. And of course, you see that uh, from the aspect of scientific research, you may notice that every country uh, have their uh, location of their rovers or the landers have a different place. This is because although we already have about 50 missions to Mars, every, uh, the, the, uh, the space capable missions, but uh, still we have little understanding of Mars. So we need more information, we need more knowledge. So for rover, even if they have the same kind of payload, we can land on different places to get different results. This is a very natural choice. So what is the significance of uh, this current uh, mission, uh, Professor Yang? Well, the, there are many significant points of this mission. You see, this is uh, first the China's inter, uh, interplanetary exploration mission called the Tianwen-1. And the Tianwen series, in the future, we will also have Mars re, uh, sample return missions, the Jupiter missions, asteroid missions, and beyond. So this is the first one. And today's launch is the first time China's launch vehicle uh, launched a spacecraft into the, uh, into, into, the, uh, into the space beyond the near-Earth space, or uh, have the, uh, reached the velocity of the so-called second second cosmic velocity, uh, which is bigger than uh, 11.2 kilometers per second. And also, the uh, accuracy of the rocket ensures the future mission uh, will be clarified smoothly. Uh, Dr. Gosh, um, how do you look at the uh, mission and also the significance of this landing uh, launched by China into Mars? Well, I think, see, I have worked for multiple generations of Mars missions by NASA. Uh, so, so this is a fascinating frontier. Imagine visiting a planet where, where you know, humans haven't landed before and, so, and, and looking at the landscape and finding the new discoveries. So, so you should take a step back and think of, uh, you know, maybe 100 years back, maybe 150 years back, humans did not uh, uh, live everywhere that we live now. America was, um, three, 500 years back, America was... Uh, they did not have the civilization right now that they have. So, so this is you're you're sticking out an unknown frontier when ultimately humans might live, and the landing site is so interesting because um, you know um, first is the Viking two landers, one of them 
Viking cargo mission, uh, which um, which NASA sent around 1976, uh, landed uh, uh, in this landing site that you mentioned. And two is uh, there is evidence of past water and maybe even underground ice in this location. And water and ice uh, uh, are very important in space exploration because if ever humans were to be sent, um, then you need uh, to, you cannot carry the water and the oxygen from Earth for, for, for it to be cost sustainable. So I think that is one of the reasons uh, mm -hmm. typically um, scientific missions uh, uh, um, uh, gravitate around where, where there's possibility of water or ice. So I think overall it's a very big deal. I think it's a um, huge um, journey um, and um, I think the international community is very positive about it. And we are all looking forward to all these three missions which right. are headed to Mars for them to be successful. Professor Yang, this is the first of China's space-bound launches in which um, China has used a completely homegrown technology, according to reports. Uh, it is also the first time a Long March 5 rocket uh, is used for a mission that is not experimental. Uh, how do you read into those, uh, you know, firsts? Well, Long March 5 series is very important for China's space programs, especially for China's uh, future space station program and for China's deep space missions such as the sample return missions, so-called Chang'e 5, and the future uh, interplanetary missions. So, uh, although we already have uh, five launches for this series, including today's launch, but still it is a new launch vehicle and we adopted many new technologies and uh, it is very challenging task for keeping the reliability and, uh, and the successful rate of this launch vehicle. So in the future, we still have a lot of work to do. Right. Um, and also, you know, uh, to our viewers, uh, some of them may not understand, uh, you know, or fully appreciate uh, the significance of, uh, you know, a rocket uh, sent into Mars. Uh, why Mars, Professor Yang? Well, there are many aspects that we choose Mars. So you see, Mars is, can be called the sister planet of the Earth together with Venus. So studying Mars we will give a more comprehensive understanding of the Earth, especially the evolution, the history of the Earth. And it is more, very critical for us to study Mars uh, if we want to have a very precise prediction of the future evolution of the Earth and the uh, solar system. So it is very important for us, uh, for us to understand the future of a human being, the destiny of the human being. Uh, if, so we need to study Mars. And the second, so you see that in the billions, years, uh, billions of years before, Mars is more warmer and have more water uh, comparing with the current stage. So uh, in the years before, it may possible to have life forms, although uh, all these are vanished and uh, until now we don't have uh, any direct evidence of the life. But study the life and the possible evidence will help us to get a better understanding of the life itself. And the third, from the uh, aspect of engineering, because there are huge amount of water, as Dr. Amitabh Ghosh have mentioned. So in the future, we may use this water uh, on Mars and also use other resources on Mars to have a permanent base, which can reduce the, greatly reduce the cost of the transportation between mm -hmm. the Earth and Mars. And the Mars can become an output for the future, uh, for the human being, for the future exploration and the exploitation of the outer solar system, maybe a century later. Sounds fascinating to me. Um, Dr. Gosh, Tianwen-1 is due to land on Mars uh, in March 2021. Around the same time, uh, missions from the U.S. and UAE reach orbit. Uh, the Americans are sending a second rover, so could the Chinese and U.S. missions uh, intersect on the planet? So I don't think so, unless they uh, change the location. Um, so Mars is, you know, it's a big, big planet. The land area of Mars is, equal to, is almost equal to the land area of Earth, um, almost equal. Um, so, so there is no, um, I, I don't think the landing site has been completely decided. Uh, so there is little chance of it intersecting. But um, I just want to reinforce what Dr. Yang said. Uh, the first 500 million years on Mars was almost like on Earth. There were oceans on Mars, there was an atmosphere on Mars. So there is a very interesting possibility that there could have been life on Mars. And this is before life on Earth happened, which is probably 3,800 million years from today. So Mars is very exciting to human beings, uh, all countries, um, because of that reason. And then, uh, Dr. Gosh, um, you know, when you look at media reports, mainstream media in the U.S. is painting the China and U.S. Mars missions 
uh, as a new space race. Uh, does this framing have any merit? So, you know, um, uh, as pro probably Dr. Yang will agree with me, uh, the international community of scientists generally cheerlead any country that goes and does any scientific discovery, including missions. So uh, when the Indian mission was launched, there are some said that there's a competition between India and China. The truth is, each country does its own exploration program for its own needs, own strategic priorities. I don't think it's related to what other countries do or not do. So I think, for example, this mission must have, uh, the planning must have started 10 years ago. I don't think um, it's related to, as I said, what other countries do. It's to um, develop their own capability, develop their own scientific prowess. So that's, that's my thought. Well, Professor Yang, you know, a Google search of Tianwen One mission um, on Google News in particular brings two stories uh, out front, uh, one by CNN and the other by the Wall Street Journal to the top, uh, both of which seek to paint the mission as a sort of challenge to U.S. space superiority. Uh, how do you look at that? Well, that's not true. You see that until today, the, uh, only the United States can la la uh, normally la uh, landing a spacecraft on the Martian surface and perform scientific research. So uh, today, the U.S. plays a leading role in Mars exploration and no one can challenge this role. We China perform this uh, kind of uh, Mars mission just because we need to uh, perform these kind of missions to promote the high technology field of China and also this will be benefit the China's national economy and also the especially the high technology research. Uh, you see, as Ms. Dr. Amitav Ghosh uh, have mentioned, all, uh, all depending on our own needs. So we don't compete with other countries. We will not challenging the roles of other, other countries. It's meaningless. So you see, uh, on the contrary, we don't challenge other countries and we have the cooperation and collaboration with countries. For instance, for this, uh, for this uh, Tianwen One mission, we get the uh, we get the telemetry support from European countries, and also they will use their ExoMars uh, or the Mars Express orbiter to uh, to act as a backup of our orbiter during the relay data relay uh, phase of the when the land, uh, when the lander landing on the Mars or uh, the rover is rovering on the Mars. So you see, we already have these kind of international cooperations, and in in the future, this kind of cooperation can reduce the threshold for the decision makers to choose these kind of missions because each country pays some money and the, 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 the sum of money paid by uh, a certain country will be greatly reduced if it is an uh, international cooperation. So this is very, uh, I believe this is a very inevitable trend in the future for all space, space, capable, uh, space capable nations. Well, we hope space uh, cooperation can be exempt, uh, can avoid the politicization at this day and age. Um, thank you very much, Professor Yang Yigua. I understand it's a long day for you. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank our friend in India, Dr. Amita Ghosh. Uh, thank you so much.